Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about the factor theorem. This is actually like a whole series I have related to polynomials. Let's just jump right into it. So the factor theorem says, so for any polynomial f of x, we say that x minus k is a factor if and only if f of k equals zero. So in this series of videos, I've been talking about synthetic division um, and we've been talking about kind of how to synthetically divide in the relationship between x minus k and f of k equals zero. This is a really important connection to make. So we're just gonna jump right into this actually. So the exercise here is we just wanna determine is x minus one a factor of whatever function I give you, okay? so. The way that synthetic division works is we take the additive inverse, so whatever it takes to make this zero, so in this case, this is negative one, so I'm gonna take one, so I'm gonna put a one here, and then I write in descending order, starting with x to the fourth, all of the kind of placeholders for the other variables. So for x to the fourth, we have nine. Now there's nothing in the x to the third column, so when that happens, we put a zero as a placeholder, then in the x squared column, I have negative 13. Again, there's nothing in the x column, so I'll put another zero, and then we have the constant of four. And now for synthetic division, so we draw a line, and then we bring the nine down, and now I can start multiplication. So I take nine times the one, so that's nine, and then I add zero and nine, which is nine. Nine times the one is nine again, negative 13 plus nine, comes out to negative four, negative four times one is negative four, zero plus negative four is negative four, negative four times one is negative four, and then I get a zero here. Okay, so there's a couple of things then we know about this. We've been talking about this in the series. So what this means, this result here, this result means that f of one is equal to zero. And also because we have a zero here, because this ends up being a zero, we have yes, x minus one is a factor of this polynomial, okay? So that's, that's really what we're looking for here. Now, let's compare that to the next example. And I would actually challenge you to pause the video here and try this one on your own, just to make sure that you understand it and then hit play when you're ready. So I've got my one here. I'm gonna write everything again in descending order. Four, 10, two, and negative four. Draw my line bring down the four, four times one is four, 10 plus four is 14, 14 times one is 14, 14 plus two is 16, 16 times one is 16, negative four plus 16 is 12. This is not a zero, so several interpretations we get out of this. This would mean that f of one equals 12, but also, since this last number is not a zero, we can conclude that x minus one is not a factor. So it works like that. Now, um, again, if you know, so, so a related question. So from example A, so if I know that x minus one is a factor, what do I also know is a zero? f of one, since f of one equals zero, that makes one a zero. So you'll notice in math, there's a lot of overlap in like kind of how we think about the terms. So being a factor and being a zero, those are two related concepts. And so that's very important that you just start noticing that now because it's, it's very powerful, you know, if you understand the vocabulary kind of on that level. All right, so now I want to kind of keep going with this idea. So I've got, um, I, I want a factor. 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 17x minus 6. So I want to factor this into linear factors, given that negative 3 is a 0. So I know that negative 3 is a 0, so I can set up the synthetic division. And so my polynomial, I have 3, 4, negative 17, and negative 6. So just taking the coefficients off of my f of x up here, right? Okay, and so let's synthetically divide, so bring down the three. Three times three is negative nine. Four plus negative nine is negative five. Negative five times negative three is 15. Um, negative 17 plus 15 is negative two. And then negative th two times negative three is positive six. Okay, so 
Notice that this question, we, we know that negative 3 is a 0. So we're not checking for this. Instead, since we know that negative 3 is a 0, what matters in this context of asking this question is this part right here. So first of all, if negative 3 is a 0, what is the associated factor with that? If negative 3 is a 0, that means that x plus 3 is a factor. So notice just the opposite signs. If negative 3 is a 0, then x plus 3 is a factor. They've always got that kind of interplay of opposites. So you just got to keep that straight. So x plus 3 is a factor, but then also the polynomial generated by this result is also a factor. So remember how this works. This is the, let's see, maybe I'll write it here. This is the x cubed, or, sorry, this is the, so you go one degree less than this. So this started at x cubed, so this will be the x squared column, this is the x column, and this is the constant column, this is the remainder column. So my result here is 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. So let me get rid of all this for a moment. So going back to what are my factors in this case, x plus 3 was a factor, and now this is the next factor. So we have taken, so let me write that down, and then let's just note, we have taken this polynomial here, and now we have factored it into these two factors here. That's where we're at. Now, I don't need this synthetic division to finish this, so let me get rid of it. All right, so now to finish this problem, what I need to do is factor what's left. So notice what we're left with is a quadratic. This, this should ideally factor. Um, so we're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error. So let's see. I always think of trial and error. Um, so there's multiple ways to do this. I mean, you can look on YouTube for other methods. I like doing the trial and error method just because it's the easiest one for me to remember, but there's lots of other tricks if you struggle with factoring. So always feel free to look up those other tricks if you're like, oh, I really, I could use another way. Now for me, I like just doing trial and error. What makes 3x squared? That would be 3x and x, okay? And then what's gonna make negative two? Well, there's a couple ways to make negative two. So I could have plus one and negative two. So one times negative two, that'll give me the last term. So then the question just is, have I factored this in such a way so that I'll get the middle term? So if we check real quick, I have three x squared minus six x plus x minus two. So yeah, negative six x plus x will get me that negative five x. And so this is what it means to be linear factors. So notice, like if you're, if you're like, what, what makes a factor linear if you're not sure? So notice that for each one of these, like if I were to set these just by themselves, x plus 3 or 3x plus 1, do you see how each of these are in that mx plus b form? You see that? So x plus 3, this slope here would be 1, y would be the y-intercept. Here, this is like an mx plus b, right? right? So the slope here would be 3, the y-intercept would be 1. These are what makes linear factors. So they act like lines. So get rid of all that and that is that is what you're trying to get to when you're asked to do linear factors is something down to this all right so let's try this again so I, I've got another one 2x cubed minus x squared minus 8 plus 4 so we want to factor that into linear factors given that 1 half is a 0 now you know me I say math is not a spectator sport so I think that you should pause the video here give this a try um, and you know hit play when you're ready all right, so I know 1 half is a 0. So I have 2x cubed minus, oops, what am I doing? <laughs> 2 minus 1, negative 8, and 4. All right, there we go. So bring the 2 down. 2 times 1 half is 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 times 1 half is 0. Negative 8 plus 0 is negative 8, and negative 8 times 1 half is negative 4, so that gives me a 0. Okay, so I knew that was going to happen. I'm not surprised by that. Um, okay, so now I have to interpret all this information. So the first factor, so because 1 half is a 0, what that means is that x minus 1 half is a factor, right? So you always take the opposite sign. 
And then here, so remember, this is your x squared x constant. So the other factor here then is 2x squared minus 8. Okay, so let me clear some space. Okay, so now I need to finish just factoring this. Now, what I notice here, just something that might make my life easier, this has a common factor of two. So if you're like struggling to figure out how this factors, you can actually factor the two out. So check out what I do with this. I'm gonna put the two, cause it, like both of these terms, right? These are both divisible by two. That's where I'm getting that from. So I'm gonna put the two there. And if I divide this by two, this becomes x squared minus four. So maybe you were struggling with how do I factor 2x squared minus 8. If I just factor the 2 out of it, now I, I can definitely factor x squared minus 4. So that's just a little hack if you weren't having that problem. Um, so, okay, here's one way that you could factor this. Oops, sorry. Uh, here's one way you could factor this. Now, if you chose not to factor that way, the other way that you could have factored this would have been 2x minus 4 and x plus 2. Or you could have had x minus 2 and 2x plus 4. So this or this both would have worked. So, um, so yeah, so that is how that works. Okay, and so that brings us to the end of this video. That is the factor theorem. So I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.